Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Dan Nasser Judah, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Hashemite Kingdom of uh, Jordan. Your Excellency, Ambassador Dr. Abba Eddin Al Ali, Assistant Secretary General of the League of Arab States. Your Excellency, Ambassador Hesham Youssef, Assistant Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Ms. Alia Al Dali, our, our moderator for uh, the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much uh, indeed. Um, and um, Alia, uh, just to say that I've just agreed with the Secretary General that I will stay for um, another two months, so until the end of May. Although my dear friend, uh, the Foreign Minister and Deputy Prime Minister said I should be staying for another three years to shock all of you. <laughs> but it's only two months to the end of May. Um, thank you all very much and I would like to join my fellow speakers in welcoming you to this regional consultation in preparation for the May 2016 World Humanitarian Summit. My particular thanks to the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan for hosting this event, to the League of Arab States and the Organization of Islamic Corporation for co-chairing, and to all of you for being here. You've heard from all of our speakers this morning that our global humanitarian system is coming under increasing strain. Humanitarian needs around the world are rising beyond our capacity to cope. Urbanization, population growth, environmental degradation, conflict, climate change, and resource scarcity are adding to the consequences of underdevelopment, rising levels of poverty, and increasing inequality. Natural disasters do more damage, last longer, and in many places recur before people have even had a chance to recover. More people are displaced by conflict than at any time since 1945. And this is the background against which the Secretary General made a decision to convene the first, world, uh, first ever World Humanitarian Summit. And if we look at this region, in the past four and a half years, the people of the Middle East and North Africa have witnessed significant and tumultuous changes that have had an impact on everyone. Millions of people from Libya to Palestine, from Yemen to Syria and Iraq, have had their lives completely overturned by violence. And because the numbers are so big, they do little to convey the trauma experienced by people whose lives have been uprooted by conflict, violence, and displacement. In Syria alone, more than 200,000 people have died, countless more have been injured, and more than 11 million people have fled their homes. In Iraq, 2.4 million people have fled from their homes since January 2014. And in Yemen, nearly two-thirds of the population need humanitarian support. In Libya, 400,000 people are in internally displaced. And in the occupied Palestinian territory, more than 1.6 million people are in need of humanitarian aid following decades of conflict and displacement. These are conflicts which have an impact far beyond the individual countries. They are regional. Syria's neighbors have shown incredible hospitality and generosity towards those who have fled across the borders. Jordan has provided a shelter to hundreds of thousands of refugees, amounting to over 10% of its population. In Lebanon, a quarter of its population are now Syrians. Turkey, Iraq, Egypt, and other countries in North Africa have been affected. Shouldering this burden is putting a strain on public services, on infrastructure, and of course on the economies of these countries. Kuwait has generally, generously hosted two pledging conferences for Syrians in need, with a third scheduled for the 31st of March. The first saw 43 member states pledge $1.5 billion towards humanitarian efforts. The second saw 39 member states pledge $2.4 billion, with Kuwait at both conferences leading the way in that pledging. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia contributed $500 million for Iraqis in need last year, enabling UN agencies and humanitarian partners to respond with food, shelter, medical services, water, and basic household items. 
the people and governments of this region have contributed to humanitarian action through national campaigns. The UAE, Qatar, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia raised tens of millions of dollars for Syrian and Iraqi refugees during the recent winter storms. And ordinary people in the region and through diaspora networks are generously contributing to response efforts. Regional organizations, national and international NGOs, private companies, academia, the Red Cross and Red Crescent societies, and diaspora groups are also playing their part and are also active beyond the region. For example, in Somalia and Sudan, and are playing a significant role in global humanitarian action. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome the strengthened relationships and networks between humanitarian organizations, the private sector, and others in this region, particularly over the past five years. These partnerships have brought knowledge, additional capacity, and expertise to our global humanitarian efforts. We need grassroots involvement in humanitarian affairs more than ever. And we need to focus on putting people front and center of our response efforts. This diversity is essential to our future success. Given the brutality and the systematic and targeted way in which civilians have been targeted in conflict, we need to think through what more we need to do to end the climate of impunity which has grown up. We need to come up with new ideas on how to protect civilians, safeguard access, and reinforce international humanitarian and human rights law. We need to address the growing gap between humanitarian needs and the funds available to meet them. Ladies and gentlemen, we face a world full of complexity and challenge. But we do have opportunities to promote and deliver a more peaceful, prosperous, stable, and sustainable future for all. The World Humanitarian Summit is one such opportunity, and we must make the most of it. We must speak openly about the challenges, but we must think about solutions. We have a, tr a chance to transform the way we work and create a diverse and truly inclusive global humanitarian system. I hope that you will have frank discussions over the next few days and come up with innovative ideas which can feed into the World Humanitarian Summit conclusions next year. Thank you all again very much indeed for being here and I look forward to a fruitful and meaningful consultation. Thank you very much.